Okay guys, um, today I'm just gonna kind of show you uh, how to tune the PID settings for the Veravon Birdie Cam to support a lightweight setup like the GH4. I think a lot of people have picked up this Birdie Cam and um, there are a number of people who are going to fly a really lightweight system. Now the profile that's installed on here already will work with the 5D Mark II and I hear it may work with the Blackmagic Cinema Camera as well. Um, but the GH4 with a 12 to 35, which is a very common lens for this camera, uh, seems to work okay with the existing profile. But once you switch to a lighter lens, like a, my little fish eye or this 14 mil pancake or a 20 mil pancake, um, there are some things that need to be changed on here. So uh, if you plan on picking up this unit, you should get familiar with um, tuning the PID settings. Now, it's not very difficult. Uh, just make sure you remember what the settings were originally in case you have to revert to that. So right now, um, I'll show you what the problem is. If you, if you move it side to side, it's fine, but as you tilt back, you hear that vibrating? We've got too much power going on in the motor. Now, with any gimbal, when you hear that loud, loud rumbling noise, typically what you have to do is lower values. That means there's too much going on there. Um, and again, it's because it's a lightweight camera, it has too much power um, in the motors. So we're gonna tone that down. Now to do that, we're gonna launch the uh, simple BGC software on the computer. And we're going to, oh, we gotta plug in our USB. So here's a USB cable. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that my USB cable did not fit perfectly into this unit. I actually had to cut some of the material off of my USB cable to, to just get it to fit perfectly in there. Now, it could just be my cable, but if you happen to run into a, a situation where you're plugging it in and you're not getting that communication, your USB may not be sitting in all the way. So um, try taking off some of the material here or get a different USB cable and then plug that in. Another thing that you may want to look into is an extension cable. I have an extension cable here to my USB, so I have it connected to my laptop. The reason I say that is because um, if your cable's too short, you won't be able to really test your gimbal out. You want to be able to plug the USB into the, the gimbal. You want to be able to take it off the stand and kind of test it, um, you know, more than one foot away from your computer. So get a, get a decent sized cable or an extension for your USB. All right, let's get this guy plugged in. All right, now we're gonna launch the software. We're gonna choose a port, usually the last port. Uh, if you're not familiar with installing the software, I have some information on my website about doing that. One of the things you have to do is make sure you install the correct version software to match the correct version of the firmware in the controller. You can't necessarily use an older version of the software with newer firmware, vice versa. It doesn't really work out that well, so make sure you have the right version. The cool thing about the software is once you connect, it will tell you what version it is. And sometimes it'll give you an error message that the version does not match. Then you have to download a different version. Anyways, right now the version uh, of my firmware here is 2.41 B4. So look for that software if you got a Birdie Cam 2. Uh, you got it as recently as me, then that's the software you're going to use at this time. Anyway, so we're connected now. The, right here we have our PID settings. Uh, here you have your profile one, two, three. Now this is when you're toggling the joystick, it'll switch to those different profiles. And you can actually see the difference in those profiles. Um, typically the follow mode is changed. So in profile two, profile three, you notice that here we have a follow pitch roll in profile three. Profile one and two does not have that. And in RC settings, profile one, the joystick does not work. Profile two, we have a joystick. Profile three, it disables the joystick again. Um, so we'll go back to profile one. Anyways, um, I don't wanna get too involved in this area here. If you have questions about this, we'll get into this later. Right now, we're just gonna tune the PID settings so that we get rid of that oscillation. Very simple to do. Here's your PID settings. Everything else on the Veravon could just stay the same. Um, all you have to do now, okay, wait a minute. Let me take a step back here. What we're doing is we're configuring the PID settings for this GH4. Now remember, we have three different profiles. So 
what you want to do is you make sure you you remember these profiles. So hit save and you can save profile one. Switch to profile two, save profile two, profile three, save profile three. In case you ever want to revert back to the original uh, format. Now, I want to take it a little bit slow because as we make these changes, we have to write these changes and then we have to do it in all of the profiles that are available to us on this system to make sure that all the settings are the same. All right, so here in profile one, I'm just gonna change this to, let's just try 20, 20, and 20. What I'm doing is I'm just reducing all of the values on the P and on the D. We hit right. So now we go back here, okay? Now after I hit right, let's test it out. Done. No oscillation. See that? We've just tuned up our gimbal for a lightweight camera. Very, very easy. But just to show you guys um, what, what that was before, uh, I believe this was 35, 30. Actually, no, I, I won't even change that. Um, we'll, we'll skip that. We'll go to profile two, discard the changes I just made. All right, now you notice in profile two here, we have uh, 40, 30, 40, 35, 35. So let's, let's write profile two into the firmware, okay? Now, this is, this is still the original PID setting, so let's test that again. See that? But our profile one, if we load profile one here, always spins around. Okay. Profile one, nothing. Perfectly fine. So really that's all it takes to load uh, your PID settings. So tuning is not as difficult as it sounds. You just really have to know what to look for. But so we can get our, our camera set up here, um, you want to make sure you go into profile two, you change all your settings. Again, for this GH4 and this 14 mil pancake, Changing the P to 20 and all the D settings to 20 seems to work okay. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure you test it for a little while so that everything is, is working. But you would just do that in profile two. So let's do that 20, 20, 20, and we'll just, we'll just do 20 across. I'm just, I'm just guessing this, but it seems to work fine. And then you hit right, and then you would do the same. Uh, for profile three. Let me rotate this around. And then you would do the same for uh, profile three, and you know, and, and that's it. Then, then you'll be good. Um, and then once, once you're done here, you're gonna hit disconnect. Once you see the, that the system is, is properly disconnected, then you can unplug the USB cable and you're pretty much ready to go, ready to rock. No vibrations. So we didn't change anything else, just the P and the D settings. We lowered the value because we're working with a lightweight camera. Uh, obviously, if you're doing a heavier camera, then probably you wanna bump some of those P and D settings up. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it for, uh, if you guys need to get your birdie cam set up for a lightweight camera, hopefully this uh, was kind of helpful. Again, be real careful about the software. You don't want to wipe the firmware out. Um, don't ever hit any of those clear default buttons or anything like that. Be very careful. Um, make sure you save all your profiles. You take screenshots of your settings so that you can bring everything back to standard. And uh, for more advanced um, you know, SBGC tuning uh, questions, uh, just let me know. Hit me up at the blog, cheesycam.com.